guys, it's Vaughn and I am here with a beauty video. I am really sitting here doing my hair and makeup for a video, which I haven't done in a very long time, so I'm very excited and I hope you guys are too. I've been asking you all on Instagram if you want to see some more beauty and hair content and you guys were like, yup. So here we are. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I got this look. I've been wearing my hair in these kind of curly extension ponytails a lot lately, more than I thought I would. And I've been wearing it to a lot of events lately and I've been loving it. I feel so cute with this ponytail. I also shared with you guys this makeup look because this was actually highly requested. You guys didn't ask for this ponytail, but you did ask for this makeup. This makeup look is pretty simple. I'm just using a handful of some of my favorite products. What's interesting about this look is that I didn't do the winged eyeliner trick and I didn't use any mascara. I wore my makeup like this a few days ago to a burgundy themed wedding reception this look was kind of a freestyle. I was just trying to come up with something cute with the color burgundy and it turned out pretty nice and I really liked it. I thought it was a good fall slash winter look so I wanted to share it with you guys. The hair is very quick. I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my tips, tricks, and hacks to pulling off a very sleek looking ponytail like this. You definitely want to stay tuned and watch this video all the way through because I am sharing with you some of my secrets for getting this ponytail and I'm using some very unexpected products to pull off this look. So if you guys want to see how I pulled off this look, then definitely stay tuned with this hairstyle is more of a last-minute thing so usually I am working on pretty dry and hopeless hair and that's what you guys see here to help get it out of that dry state and actually be susceptible to whatever moisturizing product I apply I'm going to go ahead and wet the hair with water out of my spray bottle I'm just reaching for a leave-in conditioner that was close this is my TGIN green tea leave-in I like starting off with a leave-in because when I go in with the gels and all that stuff I like my hair to be kind of coated and a little bit protected I'm using my Felicia Leatherwood brush you guys asked me about this brush a lot I don't know where to get it I think you can order online but it is by Felicia Leatherwood this is by far my favorite brush for detangling so here I am just kind of sectioning off the hair into two big chunks. This is just gonna help me manage it better. This is actually huge because with all the hair going to the back, it'll be a lot easier to get it all into one ponytail. Now that I have the hair where I want it with my part in the middle, I'm going to hold the hair with a butterfly clip. Now this is the part where I'm gonna show you guys my first mystery product, my first hack. Are you ready? <laughs> I am using got to be glued hair gel, you guys. This is the most cemented hair gel you could possibly use for a ponytail like this if you don't want that sucker to move. Now this is a spiking hair gel that people usually use to to secure their lace front wig so it's an intense gel so that's why I am applying it in layers like this with the butterfly clip in the back because I don't want the gel to set before I'm ready to secure my ponytail so the steps are apply the product carefully brush the hair into position and then remove the butterfly clip to secure the hair tie again this gel has such a strong hold that I want to also go in with my fine tooth comb and just smooth out all of those areas where the hair is not flawlessly laid because once it's locked it's locked my next secret weapon is this cream of nature perfect edges black this is basically a tinted hair gel in this case it's a black color I'm using this to fill in any sparse areas right but also if you have a few grays you can use it to cover those and if your hair is a little bit flaky which mine usually is because I don't do this style on clean hair I'll go ahead and apply this product directly to those areas where you see a little bit of flakes or some product buildup from the previous hairstyle whatever and it will cover it it's just an overall really good finisher so you guys do not sleep on the cream of nature perfect edges black this final step for this ponytail is for me to go ahead and braid my hair put a hair tie on the end and then just kind of touch up some of those areas where we need a little bit more hold with the gel and then it's time to put on my trusty scarf I use this scarf so much I've used it for years I'm just carefully placing it because I don't want any of the hairs to come out of place but I want to place it as far back as possible so that I can expose as much skin as possible so when I do my makeup I don't have any issues and then this next step okay this is the trick so I'm going to assume that most of you guys know that you need to put on a scarf in order to have a sleek ponytail right but how many of you guys have taken off your scarf just to find that they're still frizz. So this is my trick. I actually twist and roll the scarf around the base of the ponytail and secure it with a butterfly clip. This is going to prevent any frizz from occurring along the hair that's leading up to the ponytail. For me, this helps me not only have slick and sleek edges, but the entire ponytail is slick. All right, don't say I never taught you nothing. Now I'm just wiping away some of that excess gel from around my edges so that we can get started on the makeup. First thing I'm gonna do is moisturize my face with my Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. I love this moisturizer for my face. I got this from Sephora as a little sample. I like to apply it to my lids, my cheeks, my chin, my neck, everything. Next I'm applying this Benefit Pore Primer and I like to focus this product on the T-zone and the area right around my nose. I figured I'd put a little extra effort into my brows this time, which I haven't done in a while, so I reached for this concealer that I had tried over the summer, so it was kind of my summer complexion. Well, it turns out it's not 
not working for my winter complexion much, so I was trying to blend it out. It didn't work. So I had to go over it with another lighter, brighter concealer that I had kind of on hand to kind of blend it out and save the day. I'm telling you, my complexion be having me mind blown. But anyway, I'm gonna use Max Espresso as a transition color for my lid. The star of the show is this color called Everyone's Darling. It's gonna be that nice burgundy fall winter color. Once applied, I'm just going to blend it out into espresso and then I'm gonna use a little bit of carbon just to deepen that crease. This is kind of my go-to, I always do this. I usually apply the color to my lower lash line once I've already applied my concealer, but today I'm gonna to switch it up. Next, we're going to apply Wispy Lashes using my favorite lash glue duo. This is the one that dries down black. While the lash glue is getting tacky, I'm gonna be applying my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealers. This shade that I'm using right here is Medium Dark 3. Here's my trick for applying flawless lashes every time. The first thing I do is attach it to the center of my lid. Once that's secure, I attach the end piece. And lastly, I take my time attaching that front hanging piece because that's the most noticeable. And sometimes I'll stretch out the lid a bit and fan it just to make sure that it's flawlessly attached, especially if I'm not wearing liner. Now it's time for some liquid foundation. Don't look at my dirty applicator. I'm just going to squeeze this directly onto my face and then buff it out. I don't like putting on foundation like it's lotion, so I don't like to like smooth it and work it into my skin. I like to treat it as though it's gonna be sitting on top because it is. And whenever I do a full coverage foundation, I simply must contour and highlight because I need to bring some dimension back into my face. So I'm still using my Fenty Beauty truffle um, matchstick thingy. And so I like to um, blend that out with a nice fluffy brush all over. This also helps to kind of to help me tone my foundation just in case I didn't get it exactly right. Here I'm just using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Ginger. This is the medium two. And honestly, lately I feel like I've been kind of moving away from the whole under eye brightening trend. It just seems like the older I get, it's not as flattering as it used to be. So I've been experimenting with some other options. I use this Bare Minerals um, Loose Powder Foundation under my eye. I also did go in with my Kat Von D Translucent Powder, but I started off with this as a base and I liked it a lot more. I just have a feeling in the near future, I'm going to be going from subtle under eye brightening to no under eye brightening. We'll see. Now on to a powder I will absolutely never stop using and that's my Laura Mercier translucent powder in medium deep. I feel like no matter what quality of liquid foundation I use first, if I finish it with this powder, it's going to be flawless. Here I'm just touching up some of that burgundy color on my lower lash line and then I'm going to use a nice fluffy brush to fluff away some of that excess powder, touching up my contour a bit and I'm just about done. I'm just applying some black eyeliner so that I don't have to use mascara so all this will be easier to remove and I'm super excited about applying my blush because I love this blush this is raisin it's the perfect shade for my complexion I recently picked up this Becca shimmering skin perfecter in chocolate geo you guys this is pretty and it's super gorgeous for a brown skin. With reds and things when you're doing your lips, especially if you make it shiny, you definitely want to apply a liner so it's not moving all over your face. So I'm using Night Moth by MAC, one of my favorites. And then I'm going to apply my Sin lipstick. So the name of this lipstick, you guys, is Sin. This is an absolutely stunning lip color for any complexion, you guys, but it's something about that brown skin, that kind of caramely, peanut buttery brown skin where it looks exceptionally gorgeous. You can leave it matte or you can add a gloss. I couldn't find my lip gloss, I was so obsessed so I had to settle for this cream sheen, but this is definitely a lipstick shade with options. All right, so we're finally done. After about 35 minutes of doing our makeup, our hair is nice and set and ready to take the scarf off. I know you guys are probably nervous at this part. You're probably thinking, why should you use got to be glued? Well, you guys, I recently cut my hair and I needed a gel that was strong. If you've ever tried to smooth cut bangs into a ponytail, then you know the deal. So everything is smooth and ready to go. So now it's time for the extension. So these are the tracks that I am using. This is a model, model, kinky ZS curl hair. Hair. To ensure that this was nice and amateur friendly for me, I went ahead and sewed some hair clips onto the tracks. I'm just going to apply it right at the end of the ponytail and then kind of wind the rest of the track going up and then securing that end piece with that second clip that I sewed on there. This is cheap, affordable hair, right? So you definitely want to take the extra step to separate the curls and things to make it look as natural as possible. Did I mention I had two of these? Okay, my bad. So there is another one with clips sewn on it. So I'm just going to apply the same technique, applying the clip where the last one ended and just winding the hair up the ponytail and kind of securing it at the base of the ponytail. Definitely want to be as careful as possible to conceal the clips and the tracks so that no one can see it. In this case, you know, you can take a piece of the hair and wrap it around the track. For me, I found though, if I separate the curls a great deal, they actually cover 
cover the tracks, like all the frizzies and stuff. And the consequence of having really cheap, affordable hair is that it's kind of hard to get the colors to match up just right. So yes, I do realize that the ponytail is a little bit lighter brown than my hair, but it actually, honestly, you guys, looks way better than the darker version of this. So this was the lesser of the two evils. So we're all done. That's the look, right? I'm gonna go ahead and change into my fall sweater and come right back. So yeah, I really like this look, you guys. It's great for a last minute hairstyle. If your hair is dirty, if you didn't plan well enough, you can throw this together in a matter of minutes and still look your best. I also love the low commitment of this hairstyle because I can literally take it down a night after wearing it and have a whole different hairstyle the next day. I'm not obligated to keep this going. I also love how easy this makeup will be to remove because I didn't use any eyeliner or mascara. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. I hope the tips and tricks are going to be helpful to you. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and I'll talk to you guys in my next one. Bye.